It may not look it and it may not feel like it, but it is springtime, which means a lot of people like myself are gonna be using this time to get some yard work done. One of the most important things to have is a lawnmower that works well. I know we usually do car reviews on test drive, but given the current situation, I think it's gonna be fun to talk about a lawnmower and specifically this Craftsman C459-36401. This was available originally at Sears Canada. You might be able to still get them in the used market, but I wanna go over this. It's pretty similar to any of the current Craftsman entry-level gas mowers that are available today. It is a two-in-one gas push mower. A lot of people like to go for a three-in-one. So this is more of an entry-level mower, which is fine for a lot of smaller properties. My property size is about 37,000 square feet, which is way too big for this type of mower but I didn't really know that at the time and I've been doing some research about it. So not only are we gonna be going over what you need to know about this mower, what you need to do with it if you have a mower like this, but we're also gonna be talking about why you might wanna consider this and why you might wanna go up to something a little bit bigger. Now this is a 140cc engine. It's a small engine made by MTD. It's an overhead valve engine and it is a push mower. You don't have any drive system on here, so you do need to push it to go. There are mowers out there that have a rear wheel drive, a front wheel drive, and even some that are all wheel drive and I'm hoping we'll have the opportunity sometime down the road to be able to talk about some of those. Now it has a primer system you push the primer three times to get some gas into the engine and then you rip the cord and let it go. I don't have a lot of specifications on this specific mower there's not much online but I can tell you that every time I use it it fires up with one pull and that could be something that's very important for people especially if you don't have the strength or energy to keep pulling that every single time to try to get it going you pull it once, it will start up from my experience. Rear wheels are eight inches, front wheels are seven inches. They are all fixed. Some of them do have caster wheels on there so you can articulate the mower a little bit. And we do have a 22 inch cutting deck with a 21 inch blade. The blade itself is relatively universal. I've already replaced it on this. Last year I hit a pretty sizable rock and it damaged it, actually bent it to the point where it wouldn't work anymore. So I just went to my local hardware store, was able to buy one, came with a little adapter kit to be able to fit pretty much any lawnmower available, but the blade size is what's important, 21 inches. The handle on this is flat. I would consider it to be, again, more of an entry-level handle. It's not curved, it's not gripped, there's no support on it. It really is just a flat handle, so your hands might feel a little tired when you're done. They're kind of thin, and you have to hold the dead man switch the whole time while you're moving along with it. So it wouldn't be the most ideal situation, again, for a large property like this, about 37,000 square feet, but this is what I would consider to be a good choice for people who have much smaller properties. You live in the suburbs, you've got a neighbor pretty close by, so maybe you don't have as much lawn to cut. Your house takes up maybe 40%, 50% of the total lawn space there. You want to have the power of a gas mower. This should be the one for you. Now, I also mentioned too, it is a two-in-one, two-in-one being a mulcher, which basically you take off the bag, you close the back of it, and it mulches all that grass in the bottom and kind of shoots it out as it's going. And it also has a bag. A three-in-one would also add a side ejection port on this. With our setup here, we've just got the two-in-one. You only have those two options. Now, I promise we're gonna be going over what you need to know about it. So first thing we're gonna do, because it's the beginning of the season here for me to use this lawnmower, it's the third year I've got it, it means we need to change the spark plug, change the oil in it, and get it gassed up. So we're gonna be going over that quickly. So if you already know how to do that, you can skip ahead. But if you wanna see what you need to do in order to maintain this every year, follow along. So the two most important things to do every year is to change the oil. We've got 10W30 SAE oil for a single cylinder engine. We also have the correct spark plug. Now, one of the things I dislike about this Craftsman, even in the owner's manual, there's not a lot of information. It just tells you the oil. It's obviously got it on the side here, but everything else, especially the spark plug information, they really do not have that on the owner's manual. You have to go in and find the parts manual for this and then find it through the MTD website to actually get the specific parts for it. It's a pain in the ass. Now, I've got a catch can here for my oil and then I also have a funnel. This has a filter in it. It's also got a bendable nose or nozzle so I can actually line it up properly because it's not super easy. I mean, especially where this is located, you really do have to almost put it up on the side, open it up and then flip it over. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. You have a 10 millimeter ratchet here to be able to open it up and we're gonna do this. It should take about a minute, even if you aren't super good when it comes to changing the oil, doing hands-on stuff. Should be moderately easy. I find that it's not a very difficult thing to do 
overall. So we want to make sure we don't lose our cap there. And then again, I mean, you know, it's not the easiest thing where this is located, but what I suggest doing is trying to catch it as you're rolling it over. You probably will make a mess, but it's okay. It's just oil. It's not gas. It's not the worst. And you can see there, <laughs> quite a bit of it is coming out. It's not ideal, but we will clean that up before going. But you can see, actually, because of my mistake here, you can see the color of the oil. It's kind of gray, kind of dark. It's not perfect as I make a massive mess here on my gravel driveway. And I did mention earlier that the average consumer should be able to do all of this themselves. Keep in mind, I am not a professional mechanic. I actually really injured myself on the finger while we were filming the last little segment there when I took off the little drain cap here. I caught myself on this very sharp piece of metal just above it. So be careful when you are using your wrench, maybe a screwdriver, if you have a regular lug nut, that you don't have to necessarily pull it and pry it like this. It might be a little bit easier, but I did hurt myself quite a bit. So keep that in mind, but it is still pretty simple even if you're not a seasoned mechanic to do this. So we've done the oil. It is important also, I didn't mention it before, but drain the oil, make sure there's no gas, right? Use up all the gas, make sure at the end of the season anyway, you've drained it completely of gas anyway. So the oil is still empty, gives us an opportunity now to do the spark plug. So we're gonna do that. Cap right here at the front is where the lead terminal is. If you've worked on a car or anything like that, it'll be pretty familiar. You just have to pull it out. It's a bit of a pain to get it out. And it's highly recommended to use an actual spark plug removal device if you've got the proper lug for it. Again, just being careful, a lot of sharp parts on this. You don't want to get hurt. So you're going to remove this bad boy. And it's important to know that the actual gap with the spark plug is important. This one has already been pre-gapped. I know it's always recommended to double check that by using an actual gap checker. In this case, I'm trusting it enough because I actually don't have one. <laughs> you should though. But anyway, so you're gonna put that back in. Lines up pretty nicely again, especially if you've got the appropriate tool, it sort of hugs it into place. So you're gonna screw that bad boy in. It certainly helps having a little table or workbench as well if you've got it. And they also say once you get to the point where you've got resistance, where it's essentially in, you're gonna give it one quarter of a turn. So we're kind of in there now. It's about a quarter turn and we are good. So you wanna make sure you try not to touch the actual end of the spark plug there. Get it in there nice and tight. Get rid of the old one. And now, we're more or less ready to go. We need to fill up the oil. Again, in this particular case, for this specific MTD engine on this Craftsman, we need 600 milliliters of oil, that 10W30. So we're gonna put our little extendy guy in there. And we've got our oil here. We have exactly 600 milliliters in here which is perfect. Now, because this has its own filter, it will take a little while for it to fill up. And then we're gonna be pretty much ready to go. While we're doing that, while this is filling up, I should also mention that the manufacturer recommends to also check the air filter every time you go to use this. The air filter is located just on the right of your screen, the left of the device, depending on how you're looking at it. That you just twist off. It's like a little foam thing. You can clean it off and they say to dry it thoroughly before getting it back into service. And I would definitely recommend making sure it's dry. I've used it before where it's been a little wet because you know, it's raining or whatever. It does make a big difference if it's clean. That will help the overall health of your lawnmower. And other things to do every time you go out to use it, you should check the blade, make sure it's not damaged, make sure it's tight. That's something you should do every year as well, is make sure that that blade is on there nice and tight. You don't want that flying off while you're operating it. Always check things like the gas, make sure there's no particles or anything in there. Even though there is a filter and they do say to change it every year, I actually can't get the fuel filter for this particular model. Because again, you know, with Sears going out of business here in Canada, getting parts for this is a little harder because now that Lowe's Rona has taken over the Craftsman brand for selling, 
they don't have all the same parts. They don't have this particular lawnmower anymore. So you can get a universal one. It's not something we're going to touch on on this episode, but it is important to check that sort of thing. Make sure that everything is spick and span because when it comes to a gas mower, it could be problems. If you're not maintaining it properly, you don't do this, you don't do the oil, the spark plugs, things like that. It won't run really well, but if you really neglect it, you will have serious problems down the road. So it's very important if you decide to go with a gas mower, even if it's a basic one like this, you got to do the maintenance on it every single year to make sure that you get the most out of it because these will last quite a long time. You might never need to buy one again. If you don't move and the property stays the same, this could last you the rest of your life. So once we're done everything there, we put it back on a level surface, it's time just to test things out. I recommend testing it, especially if it's the first time that you are doing this yourself. Put just a little bit of gas, teeny tiny amount, just enough so that if you start it up and there is a problem, you haven't filled it up completely. Now because this is a primer, I'm going to prime it, push the button on the side three times to get some gas into it. And then we'll start it up. It's going to be a little loud, but hopefully if you're wearing headphones, it is a time maybe to turn them down a little bit. But we'll see. Will it start up on one pull after sitting for an entire season? Good stuff. Now, I'm not going to run it. Obviously, it's very loud, but you saw there pulled right away no issues whatsoever and that's something that you might notice when you're looking online for a particular lawnmower even though it might say it is a single pull to get it going check the reviews and see what people say honestly again i had no research when i went to go buy this but it works every time i go to start it up so that might be a good option to look at do the reviews and see how many pulls it takes because if you're like me there's no issues pulling it up but if you aren't quite as custom to doing this you don't have as much upper body strength or yeah whatever reason there's a reason why you don't want to be pulling this six or seven times just to get it going make sure you look into that and see what the reviews say but now that we're done all the maintenance stuff let's take this for a road test now i know it sounds kind of strange but we still are an automotive program here so we're thinking of it as we're taking a test drive with it so we're going to go out we're going to show you how this works not today though it is raining so even though you'll be seeing it immediately after this, it will be a couple days from now. And again, the grass isn't very long. So we're just going to be showing you how it works and everything else about this Craftsman C459-3601 gas-powered two-in-one lawnmower. So I said we'd be doing a driving segment with the Craftsman lawnmower, and we will. It's not possible for me to actually film it and be able to talk to you at the same time. The audio coming off of this, the amount of sound coming out of the engine will be too great for the microphone to pick up. So I just want to talk a little bit about it as you're seeing some B-roll and some footage of me using this. My property here is not very flat, which is not ideal for this type of drive system. You do want to have maybe a rear wheel drive setup if you have a larger piece of property, especially if the grade changes quite a bit. If things are not even, it'll help you go up the hills a little bit easier. But for the average consumer with a regular size house in a suburb you've got maybe 10,000 square feet of space total and most of that's taken up by your house then you should be pretty darn good with this size you're doing maybe 10 15 20 minutes of lawn mowing with this it'll be more than enough handles not the greatest not super comfortable it's flat there is nothing to help support your hands so after a while you will feel a little tired which is why I say it's good if you're using it for shorter periods of time but for what it is, it works well enough, especially at the price point. I believe I paid about, I don't know, maybe $200 for this. These go for about $250, maybe $300 tops here in Canada for a newer model, but essentially the same thing, a two-in-one Craftsman mower. Now you saw a minute ago, I fired this up after doing the seasonal maintenance on it. Now we're gonna take it for a quick spin around here. The grass isn't really prime to be cutting at this moment. I like to let it go about three inches before cutting it, and then I don't cut it down too short. I used to, but I've changed how I do it. You wanna have a little bit of growth on there. So I actually have the height adjustment set up to this, about 40% height. That seems to be about the sweet spot, especially for this type of grass that I have here. I don't want it to be too long or too short, right in the middle. So, you know, every two weeks or so, I have to come out and cut it. So this hasn't started up for a couple days now, I'll show you. We prime it three times, one, two, three, and then it should fire up with one pull.
Well, there you have it. That is the Craftsman C459 2-in-1 gas mower. There's not a whole lot else about it. You can pretty much see and get what you have here. It works out well, even though I have a much bigger size property than you should be using for this specific mower. But if you've got something quite a bit smaller, it will do well. I would recommend this again for smaller properties. It is a good entry level. If you haven't used a gas mower before you're buying one for the first time, this might be the one for you. Until next time, thanks for watching and take care.